So we kind of got called out a few videos ago where we forgot to check our mic levels before recording. Well, this leads me to a good point. You should probably do this before you start live streaming. And if you're wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about OBS audio settings. And if you're wondering how to get that great sound for your live stream, then this video is for you. Stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale. And I'm Walt. This is Live Streaming Tech, where you're going to learn how to live stream online. Super simple. Okay, thank you, Dale. Well, yes, I'm thanking myself. So we're going to cover the basic audio. And the reason being is because in OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS, a lot of times we get questions from a lot of new streamers. And I'm not, I'm not laughing. The grin isn't because I'm cracking it, because I've actually done these uh, mistakes back in the past. And that is, the question is, is they can hear my microphone they can see me just fine, but they can't hear the game or they can't hear the content that I'm providing other than what I'm talking through the microphone. And that is because of the fact that you have what's called the microphone audio capture and then you have your desktop capture or as in the newer OB Studio, OBS Studio 24.0.3. Uh, 64 bit version, um, they've kind of changed it a little bit. Before it used to be called desktop audio, now it is called audio output capture. And then you have the audio input capture. The input capture would be this lapel mic that I'm using, or whether you're using a snowball microphone, a Yeti microphone, or whatever you're using uh, to capture it. So let's go ahead and let's add the cam real quick. And I want to uh, bring that's another point too, because a lot of people will have questions about echoing, or they'll hear sound uh, twice where it's slightly delayed and nine times out of 10. That's because the fact that either a they have the sound playing through speakers and the speakers are playing it and then the microphone is catching again. So it's doing a loop or they have the uh, like, for instance, Logitech Brio here has a built in microphone and it can pick up that as well. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and add that. And once again, since I'm using a, another software right now is using Logitech Brio to record this. It shouldn't pop up on here, but the actual source itself should show up. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Video capture device. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. You can title it whatever you want. It's gonna say Logitech Brio, but once again, it's not gonna show the camera because I am using it uh, through Camtasia right now. All right, so as you see, we're looking over here in the audio mixer part right here. We want to make sure that video capture device, even though it's not picking up that microphone right now, doesn't mean necessarily it won't after we restart and restart it again. Trust me, it's done that before. It has even done it during our recordings. So you wanna make sure that is turned off or you click that speaker icon and click it to red to make sure it is off. Now, the cool thing is, is the camera, if I wasn't using the other program, it'd still pick up the camera. I would still pick up the sound from my microphone and then our desktop, hopefully. So what we're gonna do now is the second thing is we're gonna look, we're gonna click the right click the sprocket over here on the audio input to make sure that is capturing the proper microphone. And it is uh, because my brother uses the Focusrite uh, XLR uh, mixer here that's going into the PC. That is what it's picking up and that's what we want to pick up. If we want to change it for some reason, then we would change it to, for instance, the microphone Logitech Brio. We're gonna leave it on the focus right here. Hit okay. So when you're setting the sounds, normally you don't want it super cranked like this. It's fine right now because my brother actually has it balanced out somewhat and the focused right. Um, but say you were going directly into it, you're not going through a mixing board. Usually where I run, I like to run around the 75% mark. So the idea is, is I want to be able to clip a little bit of that yellow but never in the red. But at the same time, I don't want to hang linger too low in the green either as well. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, as far as the mixer is concerned, you start out in green, you go into yellow and then red. Red would be clipping the microphone, which is going to distort the microphone sound, and it's going to be horrible to people's ears. Guilty as charged. The next one is the audio output capture. This is what you hear. So in other words, if I'm streaming, I got my headphones on, and I'm, you know, playing a first person shooter, I'm trying to listen, you know, where the gunfire is coming from and whatnot. This is what you want also your audience to hear. Now, normally I usually set this anywhere from like 25 to 40% uh, because I don't want it overriding what I'm saying because, you know, eh, when you're the streamer, you're kind of the center of focus point, right? Unless it's like a really badass game, then you, you know, 
All right, so we're gonna make sure once again, we wanna make sure we click that properties, the sprocket there. And once again, it is perfectly set up. It's set up the speakers and headphones. So basically what I'm gonna be hearing as a streamer is what my viewers are gonna be hearing as a streamer. So if you are experiencing to where there is no sound, one, first make sure that that speaker is on the gray or the white. So no red, it's not boxed out in the mute mode. And if you need to raise it up, that's the best thing to do. If you are starting out as a streamer or whatever, and you have some friends hanging around, have them go into another room, pull it up on their phone or a laptop or another PC, and then listen to the stream that way. Or if you're doing test streams on a separate channel that you don't plan on streaming on and you only use it for testing like I do, then you can go there and you can try out your audio, stop the stream, go back and listen to it yourself to see if those are the levels that you want to go now keep in mind obviously different types of content you're going to have to balance it to how you want it but this should fix that problem so if you start a stream let's say on facebook twitch youtube any of those and you're saying hey i can hear the microphone or my viewers can hear the microphone but they can't hear what the content I'm providing, whether it be watching a video, listening to the music, or playing a game, make sure you have that audio output uh, capture turned on and up loud enough to where they can hear it. Uh, for those of you using older uh, OBS Studio, it's gonna be called desktop. Um, all right, so now we're gonna get into the cool stuff, the stuff that I like to. Now, I'm not an audiophile expert, but this is what I've learned from playing around with it uh, in my past streaming, and then, of course, my brother, too. We've dabbled a little bit in it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead over here to audio output, or audio, audio input capture. We're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna click filters. It's right above properties, it's as easy as that. We're gonna click this plus button down here. Now we have a list that just dropped down. We have compressor, expander, gain, invert, polarity, limiter, noise gate, and noise suppression. Now, my three favorites that I always run with, and once again, it's gonna depend on your microphone, your location, what you're dealing with as far as background noises, but that's compressor, noise gate, and noise suppression. Okay, the cool thing about noise gate is, is at any time that you are not speaking, it cuts that microphone off. So anything that's below a certain decibel, it is not going to pick it up in the background. So say for instance, if my brother's back there chewing on chips, it will not pick him up when I stop talking. It's gonna cut the mic off pretty much. And um, as you see here, and it can kind of get a little bit uh, overwhelming, but it's not quite that difficult. So we're gonna hit an okay on the noise gate. You have the close and open threshold. With the noise gate, you have this close and open threshold. You want to kind of tweak these. And the idea is, is you want to have the close threshold block out anything that you don't want in picking up the microphone. Then you have the open threshold, which you want sets just slightly below your voice's volume. If you set it too high, it'll actually start clipping you out. It'll start taking you out of those and it'll make it sound really choppy like that. So if it starts to sound like that, back off of it a little bit. Uh, play around with it though. It's You can't really break anything. If you break it or whatever, just delete it. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to look at the next one that I really like is noise suppression. Now, noise suppression is good is because it takes out all that white noise or like say you have a fan or air conditioning running in the background. This is what that's going to cut out of it as well, is it's gonna take those types of noises. Where the noise gate is more for, you know, random sounds, that kind of stuff. Obviously, if you have somebody outside with a jackhammer, it's not gonna take that kind of noise out, but the noise suppression is, is going to block out that white noise or that like a fan blowing, or you say you have a ton of fans on your CP um, and it is just going nuts and you don't want people to pick that up, that's where you're gonna uh, apply this filter. Um, the same filter that is similar to it and I've not used, and that is the expander. You can play around with it and you can leave in the comments below and then tell me which one that you choose, whether it's noise suppression or expander. I like noise suppression because it's easy to use. It's just, you slide it and you, you, once again, you just go back or you have somebody else listen to it and you say, yeah, that is working. It is not picking up your fan that is sitting right next to you as you stream. So the expander is the same thing. It's going to cut out a lot of those background noises. Now, the thing is, is OBS uh, does recommend that uh, you put this in before the limiter. Um, 
So the idea is, is as you stack these, it does matter the order in which you put them. It is going to kind of change it a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead, let's move on here. Uh, the next one is compressor, okay? And we actually got, Dale and I got called out on this uh, a few videos ago, we had a viewer uh, that called us out because of the fact that we were not enabling a compressor when we recorded it. So for instance, uh, we, were, we were peaking a lot. What this compressor does is it takes it down, it puts like a ceiling over it. So if you reach a certain volume, it's gonna bring you back down. Now, obviously I'm applying these filters. It's not gonna change the sound. Once again, I am recording this through Camtasia um, just to do a screen capture and show you guys what is what on here. Now, um, if I'm not running with the noise gate, I'm at least running with noise suppression. Uh, once again, I don't use the expander. Let me know what you think. And then the compressor. These are my three favorites. Now, there's a couple other ones that a lot of people will mention, and that is if you have a weak powered microphone, it is not that great. You would want to throw a little bit of gain on there. That's going to boost the power, which then again kind of defeats the purpose on some of these other, but you can boost that gain up there. Uh, I prefer to do it through the operating system or a third party mixer, or once again, like Dale does through an XL our uh, mixer here to where we can uh, control the gain already before it even gets into the PC, before it even gets to OBS. That is the best way to do it. But if you, you're in a pinch and you gotta do it real quick, uh, this is where you would control the gain on your microphone. All right, so here's the thing. Never used invert polarity, <laughs> but this is what it says on the OBS website, is it says, use to correct phase cancellation issues. There you go. So if you're having issues like that, that is what you use it for. Once again, not claiming to be an audio phone expert. At any rate, uh, that's pretty much what I have there. Uh, leave your comments below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Before you go though, you definitely would wanna check out this video right up here.